Hey guys, you're watching Tech Edit on Basel. This is the Sony Xperia 5 Mark V. Sony's latest compact flagship sits in between the 1 Mark V and the 10 Mark V, and it comes in with that same Sony Exmor T for mobile 48 effective megapixel camera sensor, 1 over 1.35 inches, with that stacked pixel transistor setup should capture really, really great images. But what's interesting is Sony's actually paired this back compared to past generation Xperia 5 series devices. What am I talking about? Well, for starters, you only have two cameras around the back. There's no telephoto camera here. Instead, you have that primary camera and you've got an ultra wide camera, 50 megapixel and 12 megapixel. Then of course, there's the design. If you've seen the Xperia 5 Mark IV, you'll know it's really slim and it's elegant and the front curve really nicely out into the side. It's not a curved screen, but it's kind of like a 2.5D glass. I love the 5 Mark IV. This is an altogether chunkier affair, flatter sides, a little bit bolder in the hand, easier to grip though, which is good. But the screen has bigger bezels. It actually looks a little bit more dated from the front than the 5 Mark IV. So it's an interesting direction that Sony is taking. Still, I've been using this for about a week, not quite ready for the full review just yet, but I definitely have a lot of thoughts about it. And the 6.1 inch display is a full HD OLED display, and it looks really, really nice. You'd expect a good quality display from Sony, loads of options in the settings to customize it. Had no issues with outdoor viewability either, it gets nice and bright. And as a result, I really like the display, but definitely the big bezels left and right, relatively big, did take me out of the illusion. What with even Sony making slimmer bezels in the past on its five series device. Feels a bit more from the front like a 10 series device, dare I say, but definitely operates like a five series with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. More on that later. The design feels good in the hand. I think that 6.1 inches is a comfortable size, not too thin or small for me personally. And the flat sides and the depth that the phone has with that big 5,000 milliamp battery inside means you've actually got something to grab onto, which is nice. On the right hand side, you've got volume rocker and power button, which doubles up as a fingerprint scanner. You also have a camera button. It's two stage, but it doesn't have that really nice textured finish the Xperia 1 Mark V camera button does. So there are definite areas. It's really clear. The Xperia 1 Mark V is just that elevated level of finish. Uh, the base is a USB type C port and you've got a micro SD card slot and SIM card card tray, which you can pull out with a fingernail, which we love. Um, it is worth noting, and I'll come on to this later, there's 128 gigabytes of internal storage, so you'll definitely be using that micro SD card if you plan on using this phone for a long period of time. Left and top, uh, there aren't too many points to note, but at the top you do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is excellent, and around the back, nondescript styling, nice Sony insignia, and you've also got that camera bum, just a dual camera, primary 50 megapixel XMOR-T for mobile sensor, and an ultra wide 12 megapixel camera. On the front, you've got that 12 megapixel selfie camera as well, and dual speakers. So the design and screen come together nicely, 849 pounds. You're looking at alternatives like the Pixel 7 Pro, which is much bigger, has a more curved screen, immersive screen, and you've also got that telephoto camera around the back. You can also pick up options like the Asus Zenfone 10, another nice compact option, but that doesn't have the Exmor T for mobile camera at the helm, and I think that's what really sets Xperia 5 Mark apart in my books so far, especially for fans of Sony's imaging. I'm gonna jump right into that because I really love Sony's more natural and nuanced take on photo processing. Doesn't really overdo anything, but more to the point, you can also dive into any of the Cinema Pro, Photo Pro, Video Pro apps, depending on your level of mastery over those tools um, and capture content as you want it. Even if you don't do that, even if you use a basic mode, just like with the Xperia, a one mark for, you can still capture great photos with a really rich dynamic range. The sensor is probably around best in class, the main camera sensor, when it comes to noise handling at the price. Um, the Sony's processing will also help with that and also shooting raw takes that even further. Raw photos are capped at 12 megapixels, so you can't capture full resolution 50 megapixel or 48 megapixel raw images. 
Now, while I would have loved an actual periscope zoom on a compact camera, the two times zoom on here does a really decent job considering it's a digital zoom because ultimately the size of the sensor matched with the technology means you're gonna get relatively comparable results to optical zooms from a few years ago. Um, just crops in, you've got that optical image stabilization to keep everything nice and still as well. So I got decent enough results. So I was in the lobby of a hotel earlier today and I really liked the typography and so I punched right in and I was able to get a shot that captured the typography I wanted to even though I was all the way on the other end of the hotel like all the way over there so you do get some range despite the lack of a telephoto camera and if you give me the choice between a higher quality primary camera and no telephoto camera or a telephoto camera with a mediocre primary camera it's obvious I'm going to pick the better primary camera every time so the Xperia 5 Mark V does deliver on that front. Sony's launching a new portrait mode and also a video creator app on the 5 Mark V, both of which will be rolling out to the 1 Mark V. Annoyingly, I couldn't test out the video creator app because it's not on the pre-release review device that I've been using. But there are a few other really cool features about this phone that you won't get on a lot of other £849 phones. Like, for example, it works as a camera monitor. It has that additional microphone around the back to make it that bit better for vlogging. And I really like the fact that it can plug it into an external monitor to a TV or something and I can use that as a monitor for the camera itself. So having that video out, having that external monitor functionality and those pro applications in there really do set it apart. And if you're not someone who leans on zooming, you don't need that periscope camera of the Xperia 1 Mark V, then the Xperia 5 Mark V might actually be a better value alternative, especially with the improved battery. The smaller screen demands mean that 5,000 milliamp battery can stretch further. I've had no issues, even with relatively heavy hotspotting. I'm traveling, I'm at Ether in Berlin at the moment. I've not really needed to power it up more than a couple of times just to top it up when I've been hotspotting. And on a regular day, I'll end with about 20 to 40% left in the tank, which is really great going. Also, the phone sounds very good. At max volumes, yeah, it does get a bit shrill, gets a bit tinny, but for a phone of its size, it has quite an immersive soundscape and simultaneously audio from the headphone jack, it's always a winner. Performance is also unsurprisingly excellent. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is a very tried and tested chip. Eight gigabytes of RAM, not the most out there, but it's enough for comfortable use. I didn't love the fact you have 128 gigabytes of storage on here as standard because frankly speaking, I've had it for a week. I'm up to 76 gigabytes of storage. Like games today can be up to 20 plus gigabytes Genshin Impact, for example, and you can't install those onto SD cards. And Spotify, WhatsApp backup, etc. All of that stuff needs to be on internal storage. So you end up with that 128 gigabytes lasting a power user realistically around six to 12 months. Not enough for me personally, and I'm sure not enough for a lot of you, but that SD card slot does mean you'll have space for all the 4K videos, which will take up tons of space that you record on this thing, music, etc., that you record, you download offline and put on the phone. So not the end of the world but today 256 gigabytes is a minimum at this kind of price point for me. There is an advanced gaming engine, Game Enhancer. We've seen it before, but the UI has been updated this time around and it all does a really good job. Didn't have any issues playing Genshin Impact at max graphic settings um, and heat management was fair in my time with it, but I didn't really hammer it. I haven't had a chance to do that just yet, but I will. If you've got any questions about the phone though, like I said, been using it for just under a week. We'll continue to be using it for a fair bit more. Let me know what you want to know in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer. I'll upload some samples as well so you can have a look at how the camera performance stacks up and decide for yourself. Like the video, click that thumbs up button. If you like the channel, subscribe. It's how you're going to stay on top of everything that I do. Thanks for watching.